first. Sure. Go ahead. I promise not to take all the sing out of it. Because I don't sing. Not even in the shower. So good morning and welcome. My name is Shireen Hill and I am uh, so excited to get to share a few things with you. Thank you for being here in the sanctuary. And if you're in the virtual sanctuary, send us a chat and let us know that you're here because we know we can feel your energy and we're happy that you're here. Um, I'm excited because we're continuing the message service or uh, message that um, uh, Trish has been introducing to us about finding yourself in transition. And I really enjoyed having the homework last week that really helped me to process through for the week what the message was last week. And so if you weren't able to uh, attend last week, that is recorded online. So you can find it on YouTube. <laughs> Typically, you also can find it on Facebook, but something went awry and it didn't get recorded there. But if you look for Unity Denver um, on uh, YouTube, you'll find the message last week. So as we were processing through homework, or as I was this week, I started to really realize the blessing of learning and growing. And so while your insert has quite a few things in it, I picked out a few that are about learning and growing. Um, the first one has to do with the spiritually motivated um, social engagement team. And this is a movie that we are showing this Friday that honors Women's History Month, or really it's all about the feminine contribution to co-creating is what we're really honoring if you look at it through the eyes of unity. And I part of the learning and growing that um, it made me consider is the fact that we are very blessed in our um, communities to be free to learn regardless of gender. But this, uh, this documentary shows us the story of nine different um, young women, young girls around the world that don't have the opportunity to have an education, to co-create, to have their voices heard. And so I invite you to come um, Friday and uh, view the documentary with us and then have some time to talk about it later and, and maybe see are there ways that we can be spiritually engaged and be able to make a difference. The next one has to do with our new member class. And again, this is an opportunity for us to come together and learn. Learn about what the creed means that we state each Sunday. What are the principles that we live by? And um, so if you're interested in this, it's, it's a way to come and learn more about who we are, but it's also a path to becoming a member. And you can see that you can sign up at, uni at uh, unitydenver.org, whether you are here or online. And um, then the last one has to do with our welcome team, and that's really coming together this, this afternoon at right after the service, right after fellowship. We do let you have a little fellowship before you come into the, to, to the training, but that'll be in the children's garden. If you'll join us there, it's another way to learn about um, welcoming as a ministry. And if you are new here, make sure you, that you um, have an opportunity to stop at our welcome Welcome desk. That's where you can um, find a packet about who we are. There's a free um, a gift that you can pick up in the bookstore. And then if you're online, the same thing. If you go to unitydenver.org slash new to unity, you can do the same thing. So that's it for today. Trish, it's yours. I'll get this back. You oh, as soon as I sing, he turns it on. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say a few more words about the welcoming. I know we've talked about a welcoming class and a welcoming orientation, which might assume, what are you saying, we don't know how to welcome people? Um, of course, that's not necessarily true. And I really need you all to be aware of that because I can't be down here. And Pre-COVID, we had a whole team of people that would be at the doors, just saying good morning, opening your door. I remember the first time I came here, 
20 years ago, and Les Botham was right there saying good morning, and I just felt seen, and that's all it took, right? He didn't have to go into a big, what, what's your name, where do you live, how many kids do you have? Um, so it's really an opportunity to consider that, as Shereen said, as a ministry. And um, I highly encourage, and you get kind of connected as a team. If you are new to our community, it's a great, easy way to meet people. So if you have any inclination, don't think you're coming to a master's class on welcoming at 1130. We'll have a little fun and um, be reminded of how important it is to welcome people when they enter a spiritual community. So I hope you'll take us up on that. And also I want to just um, shout out, is he in here? Are they in here? I see, yep. Okay, I've got an audience here, ready. Um, I want to let you know that the fellowship meal today is being provided by the men's team, men's group, and they're even gonna do the dishes. I give them such a hard time, I know, I give you all a hard time. And it's really in honor of um, our two council members who have completed their terms and we're thanking them for that. Doug Harris served five years, a little over five years on the council. And Thea Washington, who's also here, served three years. And so we, yes, was that a drum roll? No, okay. So we're thanking them for that and also just recognizing the two new council members, uh, Jessica Wynn and Jim Lou Allen, who have stepped up into service, thanking them. Yes. As well as I want to just mention that, uh, you know, last week we, we bid farewell to Natalie Simons as our youth and family ministry director, and Lisa Yelnick has stepped up to complete that or to hold that space for our children, and so we welcome her back. She's a wealth of love and knowledge. So thank you to Lisa. Thank you. Oh, I'll just make you keep clapping. Um, okay, I'm going to do a little magic trick real quick. You ready for this? See that? Oh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I went to school for this. We forgot to do that before you all arrived, so there you go. I've done my magic trick. Okay. If I didn't enter, did I introduce myself? S sorry, I, I'm Trish Morris, uh, your spiritual leader here at Unity Spiritual Center Denver, and I welcome you all here. I'm glad that you're with us today. We'll get started just by kind of getting centered in what we come together to remember and to learn and to live into together. So you were correct, Al. We're gonna start by saying our creed that we begin with each Sunday. So I just invite you to take a deep breath. <sighs> Let yourself arrive here as you claim this with me. Our God is love. Our race is human. Our faith is oneness. And so we rest a bit in that. We relax a bit as we come together in that sense of love and oneness this morning. As Shireen mentioned, uh, we're, I'm taking you through a series on, uh, on the book by Robert Brummett, Finding Yourself in Transition. And that is what my reading is from this morning. And you, you will recall that we are talking about endings. Transitions, according to him, are laid out in three sort of stages. We start with an ending, and then we have this in-between period where there's, we're kind of processed the ending, haven't started a new beginning, and we're evaluating and sort of in limbo. It's called the neutral zone, and then the new beginning. And there's always often a rush to go from the ending to the new beginning. Uh, but there's a lot that we can glean in the middle, as well as from the endings, which I hope to um, continue to talk with you about today. So that is the reading that I'm picking up with uh, in contemplating endings. It is often a time of crisis, feels like a time of danger and opportunity, a time of breakdowns and breakthroughs. It is especially important that we turn to the God of our understanding during these times of passage. Ironically, this is often a time when our faith in everything, including God, is shaken. Yet if we can but realize it, the possibility for an entirely new understanding of God, 
and a relationship with God is emerging. Each transition allows us the opportunity for a bigger God than the one we once believed in. We can realize that God is not only guiding us through the transition, but is the very force that is bringing about the transition and the resultant transformation. Oh, I'm supposed to ring the bowl, sorry. Yes, I forgot this last week. So, yeah, this is just, as we settle in for an opening prayer, I just invite you to take a breath, relax. We ring this crystal bowl that is tuned to our heart chakra. So we just let that sound open us up, settle us in for a time of prayer. of love, of God, of strength, understanding, are present as well. So just breathe into that, releasing as much as you can the weight of anything you might be holding into that truth that the power, the presence, the love of God resides within and all around you right this very moment. We know that in truth there's nothing you have to do or be or have or get in order to know that truth. It is always true. It is the truth of you. And so let your mind and heart connect with that as you hold anything in your heart or on your mind that might be challenging you or troubling you. Infusing it with the knowledge that you have within you, the strength to be guided through that in any situation that comes your way. as we are all connected and expressing that one source, we know that we are never truly alone. That each one of us is an individual expression of God. And so we feel the support of that knowing. And we bring to mind those in our lives or on our hearts that could use the reminder of that, that they are not alone. And that the love and wisdom and understanding of God is with them as well. And we hold the people around the world experiencing war this morning, particularly in our hearts, knowing that for them, may they feel that comfort, that guidance and protection, and that they are not alone. And 
And so this morning we let that love, that light, that wisdom shine through us as we move through our day, knowing and trusting that we are living expressions of God right here, right now. And so it is. Amen. Welcome, Beltman and Halpin. Glad to have you Thank back. You. My own true love showed up today In the misty early light of the morning My own true love just came my way To my surprise without any warning I was lying in my bed With voices in my head Remembering the feeling of you when a new voice came along and said in simple song, My love for you is faithful and true. I'd been praying night and day that he would come my way to comfort me in all my disillusion. I was hoping he would show, and then I'd finally know the feeling of a love without confusion. It is so, it is so. For my own true love showed up today As the misty early light seeped through my curtain My own true love just came my way To ease my worried head that was hurting I was lying in my bed with voices in my head when a new voice showed up to say, I will never let you go. I wanted you to know your heart and mine as one will always stay. Your worries are all gone, for I will keep you strong and comfort you in all your disillusion. You have all that you need, my love has set you free, and loneliness is just illusion, it shall be, it shall be. dark and strong now that he's come along to my surprise he's not a man at all and the irony of truth is lost to us in youth in the struggle and the fear of self-discovery and what I believe I'm finding is permanent and binding and I think my heart will make a full recovery we shall see we shall see for my own true love showed up today to heal my wounds and set my heart free my own true love just came my way and he's not the man I thought he would be no siree He's just me My own true love Is just me
Thank you. Okay, we can go home now. Oh, that was beautiful, thank you. Oh, can you imagine living our life every day, knowing that, feeling that? Ah, oh, you don't wanna follow me around lately, it hasn't been going so well. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, yeah, what do I wanna say about that? That was so beautiful. So we're, we're continuing, here's the thing, I got real excited about this. Um, I've read this book several times, Finding Yourself in Transition, Using Life's Changes for Spiritual Awakening. Taught a class on it a time or two. Always find it useful, but to me it's just really um, on fire in terms of what's happening right now. I see, I'm seeing all of you. You know, I'm running around in the morning, I don't see everybody. I was wondering where you were. I'm glad to see Pat's here, so I won't call anyone else out. I know you're not supposed to do that. The others feel left out. I see you all, I'm glad you're here. Um, but yeah, it really has helped me understand a lot of what I have been feeling and I think what I've been hearing you all have been feeling as a result of all the events that have happened over the past two and a half years. There were some events already happening before that that were a little uncomfortable. Um, concerning, we were talking about the divide among us and worrying about that or what we could do to remember our connection and connect more deeply around that. Um, and so today I want to talk to you about, we're going to dive back into the ending. I know, Trish, can we just get on to something lighter? You're going to, you're going to, it's going to, you're going to find value in this. I promise. And last week I quoted, um, Brahmat Brahmat includes work by, I said Jeff Bridges, who's clearly the actor. William Bridges, uh, who wrote a book called Transitions, Making Sense of Life, Life's Changes. And so today we're gonna focus on the four elements of endings, and they are so wonderful. They go like this, disengagement, disidentification, disenchantment, and disorientation. You ready? But I think you're really gonna see it's gonna make sense, some of what you're feeling, and the important part is what's possible, what's available. I know, and we talked about last week, that there is that within us that wants to get away from discomfort, understandably. If something ends, you lose someone, it's painful, it's uncomfortable, and you wanna get through it as quickly as you can. And yet, often, and I know all of you know, when you have those big life events, there's an opportunity to really see beneath all of the normal functionings of your life, and you, you see parts of yourself and your relationships that aren't always available when we're just sort of going through the motions and, and on the surface level. Would you agree with that? Okay, so far, so good. Um, so we, we know why there, and we also talked about last week that our culture sort of doesn't, and there's Paige, oh my gosh, this is gonna be fun. I'm seeing all sorts of people. Okay, I'll stop. Um, my point, my point. Oh, that culturally we're not well supported in process. We're, you know, it's like, let's get on with it, let's be productive, and transition is a process, and it's a rich process, as you will see today. So, I'm gonna have um, Elle put the first slide up for you on disengagement. Oh, that's probably gonna be another slide, that's okay. That's gonna review the elements of the transition, ending the void and new beginnings. And he reminds us that everything in our visible world has a beginning and an end. So, the better we can get acquainted with that and comfortable with that, the better off we will be. So the first element of endings is called, is known as disengagement. And you can flash that next slide there, Al. And I think this is a lot of what we're feeling, and this is what actually sort of happened to us. 
Oftentimes when you have an ending in your life, you naturally pull back, Ooh, excuse me, from your involvement. You don't do the things you're used to doing, you're not as active. Well, we were sort of forced, right, to stay in, to disengage from all the ways that we connect in the world through our activities, um, and a break from our familiar social matrix occurred. And so we were no longer doing what we used to do, disengaging from that familiar routine. And by way of doing that, I mean, we had some feelings about it. Some of us were like, yes! And some of us, initially, just initially, then it got real old real fast. Um, others were, you know, feeling very lonely very quickly. But the disengagement process itself opens up, is an invitation to go inward. And so it's important that as we are doing that, and we're still, we're still doing some of that, and, some of, and what's also happened, I find, is that we're hanging out there a little bit. We're thinking more and more about, do I wanna do that? Does that really, is that hold value to me? Why did I ever do that to begin with? Forget it. Um, so there's a, a general feeling of disengagement. So it's important to kind of connect Take that time as Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness to really connect with the transition that was going on in him. As, and there's many other examples of that, right? You go away, you're, you're disengaged from your normal activities and you make use of that time. And the next step, uh, the aspect of endings is dis-identification. So dis disengagement happens out here. We stop doing all the things we were doing out here and then this is sort of the inward experience of that where our identity becomes a little um, questioned because socially we kind of use that outer, those outer relationships, those outer roles, those social cues. They serve as mirrors to sort of who we are, how we know ourselves to be. And when we have disengaged from them, the question then emerges, who am I? And that is also what I think many of us, without really noticing it, maybe saying, oh, uh, right now I'm in the disidentification mode. Uh, but we're questioning that, we're uncovering that, and noticing the ways that, that much of our identity might have been outside of us and starting to reclaim some of that. So that is disidentification. And the other thing that's, an, oh, go back, nice try, nice try, I like your style. Um, the other thing that's important to remember here is that we have, as human beings, we have a very strong tendency, a very strong um, commitment to our identity. It's very important to us, who I am, and it, it, it provides a, a way of knowing that is comfortable, that's predictable, that is supportive, and we do a lot of things to be sure that our identity is intact, particularly socially. Um, and so Stephen Levine has this quote for us that I think is helpful in this stage to remember that in the letting go of who we imagined ourselves to be, letting go of our thinking and our attempt to control the world, we come upon our natural being, which has been waiting patiently for all those years, all these years for us to come home. And so what happens is we get so identified with the outer and the roles that we are um, spending less time in that deeper connection to who we are below all of that, that uh, which is really where we kind of find our spiritual self, our spiritual truth. Now you can go on to the next slide. Thank you, Al. More about disidentification. I love, it, it gives new meaning to me that line from Jesus where he says, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Um, that is a, an idea of letting go of the idea that you are defined by your social roles, your the roles you play with your family, even your physical body, how that plays into things, um, if you're in a relationship or not, how crazy your kids are making you or not. Um, oh boy, come on now, that was a good one. 
Okay, your parents, maybe your parents are making you a little bit crazy, but you love them. So if you can recognize all the ways that you identify outside of yourself and let that go in order to make room for the truer identity, which we call Christ consciousness or the Christ spirit within you, if you let go of that and follow that as your lead, um, you will find the truth of you. You will find the true meaning of your life. Does that make sense? Good morning. Okay. I knew I'd put you to sleep with slides. Is it the slides bringing you down? Okay. No, you're just, ident- you're just disengaged. I understand. I understand. Yeah. So, the, and the, the, the tool to use in this particular f- aspect, by now you've disengaged, you're disidentified, and you are, what was the other one? Dis- no. Thank you. No, that's next. That's my favorite. Disenchantment's next. Disengaged, disidentified. Yeah, we're, we're on track. And so you're beginning to have a sense of loss. You're beginning to feel a little bit confused. Who am I outside of these norms, these expectations, these things that I do outside, coming back in, and recognizing parts of yourself, perhaps, um, and parts of what you knew to be true about life, that aren't adding up, that aren't holding up. And so there's a sense of loss there. So the important step in this whole process is to honor that. Grieving is a powerful process, one again that we're not real comfortable with, that we're not culturally well supported with in doing, but again that holds rich meaning and rich opportunity for us to go beneath all of those, those exterior identifications and to release what we thought we were or who we thought they were. Um, and so taking some time to honor that, how we thought life would go, um, affords us not only a healthier outlook going forward, but some real um, insights about where we are now and what, what we might be ready to let go of and what we might need to spend some time grieving. And that's all natural and normal. And it's important that we honor that and support ourselves and each other in doing that. Now, uh, and I do wanna say that, do I wanna say that? Yeah, I mean, so this disidentification part, it's not as though we've just dissed our whole family. Well, I'm just gonna leave the kids and head out and they can figure it out. I'm not identifying as a parent anymore. Or I'm not identifying as a lawyer or or a spouse or whatever, right? Um, We're still in those, we're still doing what we need to do functionally together. But we're recognizing more and more that part of us that is, Less, less affected by all the dynamics of that, that is truer and stronger, that has that wisdom, that has a sense of something is brewing, something is coming forward. What's happening in this transition is making room for an evolution, my evolution, that next expression of myself in a new phase of life, perhaps. And I think that's what we're, we're coming to realize together, that in some way, life as we knew it is gone, and we don't quite know what that means. I mean, we're, st- we're coming back together now. Things are looking better, but in the process, I think a lot of us have realized some things that we hadn't realized before, and that's where disenchantment comes in. So enchantment. We have to start by understanding that to be enchanted is to live under a spell, and we all do. Every culture attempts to perpetuate its vision of reality through each of its members. We base our values, ideals, and our goals on these self-evident truths and only become aware of them when something causes us to challenge them. So there is, I, I thought for myself about You can think for yourself, what enchantments have turned to disenchantments? I have a few. Pandemics don't happen anymore. That's something that happened a long time ago. 
and you're, you can trust your government to keep you informed and protected. That's what we can trust, right. Don't now know when he get up in arms. And how about this one? Somewhere, someone is surely addressing the issue of global warming and the cries of our earth. <laughs> Racism was cured in the 60s. All people are seen and treated equally now. There's no issue of white nationalism in our country. And if you are living in poverty in the US, your, ethic, your work ethic is to blame. Everyone is given the same opportunities. And my latest and greatest one, the Cold War is long over. World War is something we will never have to worry about. There we go. So these are just some of mine that have been called into question that I've had to look at that I assumed were true and that were in some ways perpetuated culturally. I think as Americans we have a sense that we are invincible and um, that has been questioned over this experience. So ultimately that, it, that leaves you feeling disenchanted, yes? And wouldn't we wanna know that those were not true so that we can actually live accordingly? Not in fear, not in being uh, disengaged and disenchanted all the time, but that we can begin to um, recognize where we as a culture or as a, a, all of humanity have fallen short in creating and reflecting um, systems and lives that really support the, the health and wealth of all, I think ultimately we would. So if you go to the next one, uh, this is where we get into disenchantment. I've got some Wizard of Oz going here. I liked that as a... So disenchantment results from the discovery that in some sense, our world is indeed no longer real. And this is true because we realize that some of the assumptions or expectations that we have had are not reasonable or real regardless of where we got them. And the lesson of disenchantment begins with the discovery that if you want to change, I love this, really to change and not just switch positions in the same story, you must realize that some significant part of your old reality was in your head and not out there. And that's hard to take. And, Again, that makes room for a greater reality. That's the, that's the important piece of it. I'm not trying to send you all out here disenchanted. Um, and, and the important piece of this is, you know, you can, you can consider disenchantment, you can, you can consider that really from your childhood, right? There's no kids in here, right? So you remember how devastating it was to find out about you-know-who? <laughs> Santa Claus. It's devastating changed your whole world view. It did mine. I was so upset. Told all my friends, did you know about this? They're like, yeah, we knew it for a couple of years, but we didn't want to, oh, oh my God, you knew about it, you didn't tell me. He says something in the book that's, that's uh, n a nice way to think about it. Disenchantment is, is realizing that there's not, there was not, there's not a Santa Claus. And disillusionment is no, oh, I don't have it. Shoot, never mind. <laughs> Darn it. Make something up. Is, is thinking, is, it's just that, that that particular man is not the Santa Claus, I think is the one. Yeah, it's not good. I should have written it down. Um, but there are others too, right? You can think of your childhood. When you, he gives the examples of you figure out that your parents might lie or make mistakes or not come through for you or that your, your best friends disappoint you. And it goes on into adulthood, the ways in which we think our partner will never leave or never do X, Y, Z, or um, you name your favorites. They're not real expectations of other people. And then we can say, they did that to me. But really, the truth is there are also things about ourselves that we realize that we said were not true about ourselves. And we come to realize we, do, we did that. 
or we didn't do that. We said we'd never do that is what I mean. And then we end up, for whatever reason, having to do that. And so it is, it is painful. It's a breaking up of our understanding. Um, but ultimately, it is making room for a greater reality that is actually based a little more in reality. People do make mistakes, and people do die, and people do get divorced, and ministers do leave. And we get a look at what, what did we think, why did we not expect that? Why did we not think that could happen? What does that sort of tell us about our understandings, and how can we take ownership of that? in order to make room for a a truer picture to emerge. Because beneath all of that, regardless of who left who or what job ended, and I'm not underestimating that those things are painful, but there is that within us that endures and that grows and that oftentimes when we're taken out of that comfort, we do things that we never thought we could do and we learn the depth of us that I believe is pointing us to our true essence, our divine nature that is, and here's the thing, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, okay. Thanks for, thank you for letting me do this. Um, Let me get one, let me get the slide of the disenchantment experience. So, this, when you know you're disenchanted, When you're having a disenchantment experience, it's a signal that the time has come to look below the surface of what has been thought to be a certain one way. This is a sign that you are ready to see and to understand more now. Lacking that perspective on such an experience, we often miss the point and simply become disillusioned. So if we don't make that connection that there's something in me that I need to look at about my expectations and my assumptions, then we just kind of get disillusioned. The world should be that way, and it's not, and so I kind of give up. I'm just going to, I'm not going to play with others anymore. (sighs) So here's my plea. Don't just become disillusioned. Accept the divine invitation to grow your perspective from your own awakened sense of truth. And this is the possibility that we have together as well. This affects your individual life, and then as we do this together, we sort of break the social spells that we've been under and outgrow some of those assumptions to move into a greater understanding and representation together. And I think that the The divine, oh, this is my point, all right. Disorientation, let me get through disorientation and then I'll stop getting off track. Next slide, please. Thank you. This is the fourth step. So you can imagine now you've disengaged, you're not sure who you are, you're feeling a little disenchanted with it all, and you can feel a little disoriented. Which way is up? What should I be doing? What is going on? So disorientation is feeling that sense of confusion, a loss of direction, perspective. Even time and space feels differently. I've always noticed that after, when I'm in, when grieving the loss of a loved one. You know, you don't know what day it is, and you, it doesn't really matter. You lose kind of track of that. And there's some cool stuff that happens when you're not confined to how things need to be on Wednesday at two o'clock, right? So literally, in disorientation, we realize that the old maps that used to guide us through our life don't work anymore, and it feels uncomfortable. Disorientation results from the dismantling of the old self, the old life, and the old reality. And it is a necessary step in the development of the new life, the transformed self, and the greater reality. So it is an uncomfortable time, but a meaningful time. And this is the conclusion that I hope this has made you feel a little bit better about perhaps what you've been feeling. I know it doesn't feel like it by looking at you all. You do not feel better. But um, 
there is a purpose and you're not alone and you're not going crazy. There's something working through us collectively and I have no doubt individually. I know, I know you all are dealing with your own things as well. People are in the hospital, people's parents are passing. There's a lot going on all the time anyway and then we sort of have this bigger social um, experience that we're having all together. So, why is this important? This is what I've been really wanting to get to. Do I have a slide for that? I think I do. All of these disses support our transformation. So I put that up there. If you have a teenager, you get that face a lot. <laughs> why are you talking about this? But um, the truth is the process of transition, we can see that as one of transformation and allow it to uncover more of our true self and identity as an expression of divine love on earth. And it does require that we have some faith in that. And this is my point about honoring, and we, we wanna honor and trust the whole process. Don't rush it, don't feel like it's not what you should be doing. Pay attention to it. I have homework for you again today. Next week I'm gonna check it. Um, Eric Butterworth was fond of saying that God can do no more for you than God can do through you. We can't say, well, it's God's plan. God will take care of it. How has that been working? There has to be some engagement on our parts. But the thing is we can trust what we are being called and led to discover about ourselves, painful though it may be, a release though it may be, we may have to release our limited understanding of who we are and what we're capable of. We may need to release those assumptions about other people and how annoying they are. I mean, I didn't say that. Man, this is a tough crowd this morning, okay. <laughs> So, in summary, we must trust what we know and what we feel is calling us underneath all of the uncertainty and discomfort that results when our very identity is in question and we aren't sure what we are even wanting to do or with whom or why. We feel disenchanted by the fact that we ever even did but we can trust that all of that is holding great worth for us if we pay attention to it. And I think that's why many spiritual teachers have been saying, just slow down. We've all been slowed down, and so it's happened to us, and it's up to us to, make, to take the opportunity to make that meaningful as we move forward together. So, thank you for listening to that. I may, I may never do slides again, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I, they were fun to make, but. So let's just take a minute to connect with what has come up for you as I've talked about all of this. You know, we're just connecting with, taking a deep breath, maybe doing a scan of our body, noticing any place we might feel tension. Breathing into that place, inviting it to relax. Just feel your feet firmly on the ground, knowing you're supported. And just follow your breath consciously inward, letting that be the invitation to go into that place within you that knows this higher truth. And just connecting with your own experience of what I've talked about today, feeling disengaged or disenchanted, even disoriented. And I just invite you to consider what part of yourself, your understanding of yourself, 
your roles, your purpose might be ready to be released for a greater understanding. Nothing wrong with what has been, no need to judge it, but is there something you're ready to grow into? Again, trusting that there is a divine pattern working in your life. That all that comes your way is an opportunity to grow into that. To express it more fully. So what am I, what am I ready to release? And as you feel whatever comes up for you, as you feel into that, can you sense a greater expression or reality calling you? I just invite you to be with that and continue to spend time asking that question and following what gets revealed. Trusting that you and I and all of us have in fact a very specific divine pattern, divine purpose. And we're invited to grow into that each and every day. And so you can just take a breath in this moment. And we are grateful for our opportunity to know ourselves in this way, to know God in this way. Not out there, but within us. Seeking to experience itself as us. So we give thanks that we're able to know that and to live into that each and every day. for you. They'll be in the back. The ushers are passing that out. And that's just really an opportunity. There's so much great material. It's just an opportunity to go a little bit deeper. And as you know, many of you, some of you, most of you, um, I've also purposed some of that in a way that will help us as a community sort of work through the transition that we're in with the change in leadership with myself, and with Natalie leaving, to really uncover some of perhaps those expectations or things that we can we were ready to outgrow as a community as well. So I trust that there'll be something for everyone in the homework, and I won't check it. So don't worry about that. Um, so now is the time in our service where we give of our good to support this ministry. We're yet to pass 
the offering baskets, but we're going to do that soon. So there are baskets in the back for cash and check. If you'd like to leave that on your way out, we thank you for doing that. And there are ways that you can give online as well um, on your screen. So for those of you watching online, thank you for doing that. For those of you here, thank you for doing that. And um, let's go ahead and say our offering blessing together. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am thankful. Gently blowing I am the sun on her back Warmly glowing I am the rain on your face I am here and every place I am love, I am love Get close to me I am the song in your head, sweetly playing. I am the joy in your feet that keeps you swaying. I am fragrance in the air. I am flowers in your hair. I am love, I am love. Get close to me. Get close to me. Get close to me when you feel that you don't know Everything that's in this world is an answer to a prayer I am love, I am love Get close to me into the darkness I am the light from your eyes If a fear sneaks up behind you I am the courage deep inside When all else do seem to leave you And the world looks on to grieve you I am love, I am love Get close to me Get close to me when the colder breezes blow. Get close to me when you feel that you don't know. Everything that's in this world is an answer to a prayer. I am love, I am love. Get close to me. Get close to me when the colder breezes blow. Get close to me when you feel that you don't know. When you listen to your heart, you will find that I am there. I am love. I am love. Get close to me. Thank you. You have CDs outside there, sure. some digital downloads. Yes. Well, let's go with that. Yes, Wonderful. Do, yeah. Actually. Thank you. I'm so glad you were here today. It's beautiful. 
Um, so in closing, we will close with our prayer for protection, and I'm so glad all of you were here today as well. I hope that it was meaningful for you. So together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. As light, I illumine my world. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. As love, I live empathy, understanding, and compassion. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. As power, I co-create a world of love, unity, and equity for all. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. As presence, I stand in truth in every circumstance. Wherever we are, God is. Amen. And now, come love the world with me. Thank you.